Hello again, this is Pete Gerlach, the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. Uh, that website is eight self-improvement lessons. It's free. It uh, comes from what I've learned after 73 years on Earth and 31 years as a professional therapist. The second of the eight lessons has to do with improving the effectiveness of your communication. This video is one of a series uh, that has to do with Lesson 2, and in it, I want to offer you some ideas about how to handle a stressor I guarantee you have experienced and will continue to in normal relations with all people, kids and adults. Um, the stressor is called a values conflict. We all have them all the time. We also have values conflicts with ourselves internally. What is a value? Let's start with this. What is a value? How would you define value to a nine-year-old person? I would define it as a preference or a, a priority, something that is better than something else or something you prefer. I prefer to eat an orange rather than a grasshopper. Um, I would rather spend a day at the beach rather than uh, weeding the yard. Those are values, they're preferences. One thing that distinguishes them from other types of conflict is they're invisible. They're abstract. You can't take a picture of a values conflict. Um, a concrete conflict has to do with uh, I need the checkbook, well, so do I. That's over a specific concrete thing. So, how can you best manage the values conflicts you are certain to have in all your relationships? The first step, as always, is put your true self in charge. If you don't know what that means, see the videos relative to Lesson 1 and or study Lesson 1 at the Break the Cycle website. You'll do much better with values conflicts if your true self is running your life. The second thing towards managing values conflicts is cultivate the skill of awareness. Many people, in my experience as a therapist, have values conflicts, but they're not, they're not even aware of them. And they, so they struggle, they argue, they fight, they try and convince each other, my value is right, no, my value is right. That's a lose-lose proposition. Usually it frustrates both people and may damage the relationship. So, be aware when you have a values conflict. An offshoot of that is, uh, try out the habit of saying to your partner, you know, we have a values conflict here. They may or may not know what that is. If they don't know, tell them. You have one value, I have a different value. Neither one of us is right. Neither one of us is better than the other. We simply see things differently. So, use awareness to spot and affirm I have a values conflict with you right now. Now, you have several options. Be aware of where you stand with these options. The very first one is, what's your attitude about your partner right now? Do you see him or her as a person of equal dignity and worth despite your differences? Do you see his or her needs just as important as yours? Or are they inferior or superior? Do you have what I call an equal-equal attitude, a mutual respect attitude? If you do, go ahead. If you don't, you probably are ruled by a false self, which is a problem far larger than values conflicts. So, be aware of your attitude towards your partner. Seek to maintain a mutual respect attitude. Next, be aware of your options. When you discover that your partner has a different value than you, I want to sit on the couch and watch TV. 
I think we should get up and repaper, re wallpaper the bathroom. <clears throat> it's a difference in priority, it's a difference in preferences. When you discover that, notice how you go about dealing with that. People who are unaware will typically grouse, complain, attack, criticize, explain, try and persuade the other person, here's why you should do it my way. I want you to change your value to match mine. Generally what that causes is conflict, stress, aggravation, frustration. Is there a better option? Yes. The better option is be aware of those options as being lose-lose choices. And with your true self in charge, you can say, okay, I'm not going to try and convince you. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to blame you. I'm not going to feel I'm better than you because my value is clearly superior to yours. No, no that's wrong. That's lose-lose. What I'm going to do is invite you to agree to disagree. How does that sound? First, you use empathic listening to validate what the other person says. So right now, you'd much rather relax and watch the football game. And I really want to feel the satisfaction of getting our bathroom done. And the other person says, well, yeah. It doesn't mean you agree. It means you are trying to hear your partner at the moment. The next thing you can do on the premise that you can't change the other person's value without generating a lot of interpersonal stress, guilt, resistance, resentment, frustration, those are high price tags. What you can do is look at the other person and say, well, I guess we have to dis agree to disagree right now. If you can do that with a clear conscience and minimal guilt or disappointment or frustration, you're home free. If you can't, check to see if a false self is running you. See lesson one. Another option you have once you spot a significant values conflicts. Right, values conflicts range from minor to major all the time. Um, I think you look good in blue. Oh, I don't. Oh, huh. I think we should pay our bills on time every time. Oh, I don't. That's significant. That's a big one. An option you have with serious values conflicts, as opposed to trivial ones, is to use an assertive I message, capital letter I, to express how the other person's value is affecting you. An I message fundamentally is a two-part or a three-part way of saying clearly, directly, and respectfully to a partner how their behavior or an attitude affects you. For example, a significant values conflict that occurs often in primary or major relationships is one person values their holistic health more than another. Holistic health is mental or psychological plus physical plus spiritual well-being. Some people value that. They get regular medical checkups. They pay attention to spiritual growth, they eat well, they sleep well. Some people value those things because they value themselves as persons. Psychologically wounded, shame-based persons often neglect themselves. That causes, in many families and relationships, a values conflict. If you find yourself in a serious values conflict about holistic health or anything else, money, parenting, whatever. An option you have is to inform your partner of how their value affects you. That might sound, in our example, like this. Can I give you some feedback? The other person may say, sure, or why, or no, <clears throat> which is a separate issue that usually indicates they're controlled by a false self or they're distracted. If they say yes, you'd say, you know, we have a major values conflict, and I want to let you know how that affects me. As you know, or may not know, I really value holistic health, taking care of myself. My perception is 
you don't particularly value taking care of yourself. You take your health for granted. Because you do that, I feel frustrated, anxious, or even scared. And it distracts me from relating easily to you because it's on my mind a lot. Period. You can stop your assertive eye message there. It's just information. The purpose of this is not to do a guilt trip. It's not to punish. It's not to hint. It's not to lecture. It's to inform. That's all. The other person is free to react to this statement in any way they want. But you're letting them know their behavior has an effect on you. So that's an option you have with significant values conflicts. The purpose of this brief video has been to alert you to a type of stressor that exists in all relationships, in all families, in all organizations, all the values conflict. They're natural, they're normal, no one's wrong, no one's bad. What I'm proposing here is put your true self in charge, pursue awareness of the processes inside you and with other people, become aware when you have a values conflict Decide if it's minor or major. Avoid lose-lose options like trying to explain, manipulate, control, fight, hint, judge, criticize, compare. You know, my value is better than yours because don't do any of those things. They're lose-lose. They damage your relationship and your self-esteem. Instead, acknowledge you have a values conflict Say, I guess we're going to have to agree to disagree and do that if you cannot negotiate a compromise, which is the best alternative. If you can't, agree to disagree and let go. You have an option with serious uh, major values conflicts of also using an I message, an assertive I message that says, Here's what your value is, as I understand it. Here's how it affects me. Optionally, you can add, and I need you to, or I wish you would, so-and-so. So I hope you will add this awareness to your inventory of communication skills, and I hope you will teach this to the people who are important in your life, especially kids. Keep studying Lesson 2 in the Break the Cycle website and or the related videos. Thanks for watching.